within Stoplight, we can also go ahead and edit these projects as well. So if I just go ahead and go into the editor, we'll be in Stoplight Studio. Um, there is a thick client version of Stoplight Studio, and really this is the basis for Stoplight in its entirety is allowing people to easily edit, create, manage, maintain their uh, documentation for their API design, both the surrounding files, those guides, getting started, how-to guides around the APIs, as well as the open API specifications themselves. Um, so again, I'm connected into a GitHub environment. You can see I'm actually directly connected to my main branch currently. I can switch branches if I want to, for example, endpoint work or a demo docs update branch. You can see I have my V1 branch that we talked about before. I might have a V3 testing branch that I'm doing. So again, very tightly integrated to uh, Git. We do have all those markdown files. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the markdown syntax, but they do have uh, that available for you, which does uh, make the tech writer's jobs a lot easier in terms of creating this documentation. We also have a preview function both for the markdown files as well as the open API specification. So as you are making changes in your markdown file, that's going to be reflected automatically in real time in your preview as well. Um, also, as you're making changes in the markdown or in the open API spec, You'll see that as soon as I made changes, I have the option now to commit and publish this. So again, we have that full integration into Git. It's detected I have a diff in my branch here. Ask me if I want to commit that. I can revert any changes that I've made. I can commit directly to the branch that I am on, or I can also even create a new branch directly from Stoplight as well. So we have a very tight integration to that Git environment. Before I get into the actual open API design, one thing I like to point out here uh, as well is we also have something called Spectral. This is again, an open source tool that is available to you in the community as well, but it's part of our platform product. And Spectral allows us to automatically validate um, the open API specification as we are creating it. Um, and we can have a number of different rules. In fact, what I'll do here just for the demo is delete the one I have and just go ahead and add a new style guide. Um, we can have um, our style guide apply to different uh, open API spec formats. We also have async APIs, some JSON schema stuff as well. So it depends what we want our style guide to apply to. And then we can just go ahead and create that rule set. Um, I, I wanted to do that for the demo just to show that this is the out of the box rule set here. We have a number of inherited best practice rules uh, for open API specification. Uh, we can um, enable or disable any of those rules. We can escalate or de-escalate the severity of any of these rules. We can also create custom rule sets, which I don't have time to go into today, but we do have a single custom rule that we have within our environment. We can go ahead and create those for your environment. So when you are doing um, that uh, governance across your different companies or organizations, you can apply those same standard rules uh, for that across your different companies or teams that are doing that open API development. We can also reuse those models like we talked about before um, from the design library, or we also have some reusable models that we'll talk about here in a second. But again, that spectral rule set automatically gets applied. So as we are developing an API, API, whether it's an existing API like we're looking at right now, which is that billing API, or whether we create a new API, you'll see in the upper right hand corner, um, you, you know, of course, we have that preview of the API, but also we'll see the automatic linting uh, of this API happening in real time as well. So as we make changes or as we make updates into our API uh, design, we will get that uh, immediate feedback into any problems that we have, syntax, uh, style, anything like that. And just as an example, if I click on my uh, sample uh, custom rule, which is that my information section must contain the domain uh, stoplight in this case. Um, so as I um, make changes either to the code view or to the the form view, um, this will automatically remediate or detect those errors. So we can see as soon as we add stoplight into that information section, you'll see that that error uh, comes and goes from my uh, automatic linting. You'll also see that that shows up immediately here as a warning within um, within my code view. And also vice versa, anything, anything that I type into my form view is going to be reflected in my code view. So, you know, whether you're more comfortable in the form view or the code view, that's up to the the user at the end of the day, 
Um, we do have this form view for editing the open API specifications. And the whole point of this is to allow less technical or non-technical people that may not know or want to read the open API specification. And it does become a lot easier to uh, <laughs> create these open API specs in the form view once you do get used to it. Um, uh, you know, whether you edit in the form view or in the code view, that linting is happening in real time. We can configure a number of things for this open API specification. This would be where we configure particular endpoints. We can also configure security schemes that go across all of our various endpoints, uh, contact information. We also support X extensions, both at the uh, API level as well as at the endpoint level. And then we really get into the meat of uh, configuring the open API spec in terms of configuring those endpoints, uh, conf configuring any of those responses that we might have within those endpoints. Um, a couple of things to point out here is we support all of the uh, common uh, parameters like uh, params, um, headers, query parameters, all of that. We also support markdown specifically within, for example, the descriptions. So if you do want verbose descriptions or you know better looking descriptions within the documentation, we do support that uh, from the uh, endpoint level. Um, we also support that reusability like I talked about before. So we could come in here and configure every single endpoint manually. We could configure every single header manually. Um, but as you know, you know, the reason you've come to Stoplight is that introduces a lot of errors, a lot of manual errors. You have, you know, people write device ID, uh, some people write device, you know, ID. So, you know, as you're doing, if you're doing manual um, uh, things like that, you do introduce all of that sort of error within your environment. Of course, you could you could detect that with um, with our rule set oftentimes, but it's a lot easier simply to to reuse components. So what we can do is um, specify particular models, responses, parameters that we can go ahead and reference, like you would do within your Open API spec, and just go ahead and reference those particular reusable components. Um, and that's even more applicable when we start talking about the JSON schema model. So if I go down into my 200 response body, I can actually select um, uh, reusable uh, responses, like a 200, a 404, that sort of thing. But I can also select reusable models as well. So in my particular project, I have some device models that I might uh, want to reuse across my various endpoints. But I can also utilize that design library, which might have common error messages, common models, you know, anything like that that I want to go ahead and reuse. This is also where I um, set up those particular examples. So if I wanna set up my multiple devices example, device, my Wally robot device example, this is where I go ahead and set those up. Once we are done uh, configuring this, once we've decided that um, you know we've corrected any errors that we do want to correct, we can go ahead and commit and publish this. And I'll just go ahead and push this into a demo October 29th branch here. And that will then push that into GitHub. Uh, our customers then tend to um, utilize GitHub for uh, reviews, uh, comments, and that sort of thing before they actually merge that into their main branch. So it will come into GitHub, like this demo October 29th. Um, and then what a lot of our customers, especially in the Git environment, utilize is you know creating a pull request, you know, added some endpoints something like that, and then do the normal sort of Git process in terms of adding any reviewers, making any comments or updates, and then eventually merging that pull request into one of our branches within Stoplight.